Hello everyone, I'm back with another unboxing video and this time I am unboxing the Faceted Garden Oracle that I backed on Kickstarter a while ago and I'm super excited to be unboxing this deck. I got this yesterday in the mail and I was like so excited because it actually didn't take that long. You know how the shipping is a little crazy because of the pandemic nowadays but oh my god I'm super excited for this oracle. It is created by... by... By, by Claire Mac, and I believe she also has another oracle, which is the Illuminated Earth Oracle. And I do believe, like during the Kickstarter campaign, you could have picked up the other one as well. But um, I didn't pick up that one just because I'm much more drawn to this one and the artwork of this one. But I think eventually down the road, I might also pick up that oracle. Just but just letting you know that there is like another oracle that is done by the same creator and is just as gorgeous. But this one is just like more of my cup of tea kind of thing. So it came with like this lovely cute little envelope and it has like a little card and sticker in it. Let me just take it out to show you. It's that sticker. I think I'll paste that in my journal. And then we have a little handwritten note. Is that a doodle? Oh my god. Thank you so much for your support. Support. Love Claire. So I love that. Always love these personal touch. <laughs> that was something I wanted to do from the first Kickstarter, but I was just so stressed out and overwhelmed. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't do it, but I think this little envelope is definitely something, something, something really heartwarming and it's just like, I love the personal touch. All right, so let's get to the deck, the Faceted Garden Oracle. Look at the textures of this deck, like it's just absolutely gorgeous. And um, I don't know about you, but ever since like I crowdfunded my deck around the same time, well actually not around the same time, just last year on April-ish. Um, I think ever since then, actually no, it wasn't last year, was it a year before? Oh my god, everything seemed just to be going so fast. Anyway, I just mean like ever since then, like the tarot, the indie deck creators, like the indie deck scene really just bloomed and blossomed. Like you just see so many different decks on Kickstarter now, which is like always so cool to see. And um, always down to support a fellow indie deck creator and their decks. All right, so the Fasted Garden Oracle, I believe this is a matte finish. And then we got a little, what's it called? It's not spot UV. Spot UV is transparent, like a little foil action going on here. You can see how it glistens. Let me just make sure the stack is in camera. And it's not super thick because I think it's like 44 cards or something, kind of like the standard Oracle card size. I forgot if it's exactly 44, I have to double check. But I think this deck is absolutely, the box is absolutely gorgeous. It's color printing from inside and out. I think that's something I want to do for Way Out the Pan Tarot because right now it doesn't have like this color backing, but I definitely do want to look into that. Again, this texture is just like divine. All right, let's take a look. So it does come with like a little booklet. Let me just put it down. So it comes with a little pamphlet booklet. Paper is pretty nice. Um, I don't know what the printing coating is, but it almost feels plasticky actually. It feels a little plasticky, but it must be the coating. So it starts with reading the cards and then it starts with some instructions and then some basic definitions and meanings for the different oracle cards. I wonder if there are like more in-depth interpretations and meanings for these oracle cards, but let's take a look. Okay, so it's a 50 card, not 44. The Faceted Garden is a 50 card oracle of metaphor and symbolism. Ooh, that is definitely my cup of tea. The garden referring to our home on earth with all of its conditions, both ex both exquisite and harsh. The descriptions for each card are brief and associative, linking aspects of nature with human experience, wisdom, and choice. These are intuitive interpretations, loose and malleable as your own instincts will guide you to find the answers that are meant for you. So like wandering, I'm just skipping ahead, like wandering through a vivid dreamscape, this hand-painted and collaged deck will take you on an artful journey of the soul. And you can, all contents copyrighted Claire Mac, you can visit her at clairemac.com. I will leave the link down below. And then we got like, um, sort of like key phrases, keywords for each card. So that is pretty neat. I do love the coating of the paper. Not sure what to call it, but it just feels really slippery and a little silky and nice. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. So that is the card back. So a little, ooh, oops, that is, um, what the, what the, <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to get rid of the plastic strap. Oh, I guess that's how it's gonna be. <laughs> 
All right, so top and bottom card. Let me just put that back. Let me just close this. I have some space here. Okay, so that's the card back. Um, I love the texture. It is not reversible as you can, not reversible as you can see. There's a holographic edge, super gorgeous, and um, I guess let's begin. So I believe these are okay in alphabetic alphabetical order. Again, the texture is just like absolutely heavenly. Okay, animal allies. I love that because I've always been connected to the animal kingdom, and I just love the the, ge the geometric shape here. Anomaly. Oh my god! Like this is just this is just too pretty. Let me just find a. Let's see if I can just set the box in a in a that's still on screen. And okay, I think this is sort of this is this is nice. This is good. Okay. Animal allies. Indeed, indeed. Very good. Very good. Anomaly. That's very, that's very interesting. I like how it's sort of like almost like a conjoined twin rabbit. Um, it's, al it's almost like, like the rabbits are breaking apart and there's like a third thing coming out. So that's very interesting. We have birth. That is, that looks like a fetus. It is a fetus over there. It's like a floral wreath. Bloom. It's almost like a mirror. I love that. It's kind of like your own, your own blossoming and blooming. Like you are blooming into a flower. Cactus. I love that. Always love me, love me some succulents. They're just so pretty and they're so fun to draw. Cave. Interesting. I love the arrangements of these stones. Or boulder, celestial realm. Consciousness. Core. Ooh, I love that. This deck is feels very grounding. I mean, it is the facet garden oracle. It, it is about a, a metaphor for Earth, the garden of Earth. Entropy. Mm. Entwined. Fall. Ooh, I love mushrooms. I love images of mushrooms. Fall as in like the four seasons fall? Yeah, looks like fall or autumn. But I suppose it could also be just fall. Flame. Nice. I love the compass over here. Sort of like a source of light guiding you onto the right path. Fountain. Gate. I really love the texture. Gemstones. This is amazing. Because, you know, usually decks with an earthy tone or earthy colors, they're usually very dirt-like. <laughs> but I like how this deck manages to achieve that with really pretty colors and, and just just through with texture. Not, a, not that I'm saying, like, decks with more like a more of an earthy tone, a brown colored palette are not pretty. It's just like, I, I just really love the, um, the amalgamation of colors that's happening over here. Herbal Allies. Like, it feels like light and airy, but at the same time, it's very grounding, is what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of a little different from what I'm used to seeing when it comes to really earthy decks. Or what I would describe as earthy decks. Humanity. I like it's like one eye we're all seeing through. One eye, this one consciousness, collective consciousness. Light. Lotus. Oh, I love me a little good lotus flower. Metamorphosis. Mineral Realm, Morning Song, I wonder if that's a nightingale, um, Mycelium, I need to look up what that is, is that a flower, is that a phenomenon, I'm not sure, I don't have to look into that, Nest, I love that, New Moon, ooh, look at the black and the monotone, that's stunning, that's just stunning, Nocturnus, Sort of like nighttime dreaming, connecting with the universe. Bigger consciousness, that kind of thing. We have passage. Perennial. There's a lot of new words I have to look up. Pillar. Reminds me of the story of how um, the Chinese um, creationist mythology where Pangu sort of... Um, his, his body was... Well, he was the pillar of the universe of heaven and earth 
he he basically carried the sky on his shoulders and then stood on the ground to keep the sky and the earth from from colliding. So he kind of separated and then and then as he grew, the sky and the earth grew further and further apart. And then he sort of became this pillar that held the word world in its place. And eventually he died, but then at the time it was already separated enough to kind of... Anyway, it's a long story, but it's a really cool story. If you are interested, it's a Chinese creation mist featuring Pangu in there. Just reminding me of that. Pollinator. Ram. That is uh, very important because um, I'm Aries. And that is definitely my card. Scarecrow. Very cool. Seed. Spade. Okay, so I don't know if I mentioned this, but I fucking hate gardening. <laughs> I, I do appreciate images of gardening and flowers and earth and that kind of thing, but as an actual activity, I really cannot stand gardening because I don't want to be digging into the earth, digging into the roots, just digging up earthworms and getting my hands dirty. I'm just like not about that life. So if you love to garden, like good for you, awesome definitely not shitting on your hobby but for me I just can't stand it like like I, I can't do it I just gardening for me is best enjoyed from afar or when someone else is doing it or when is it a Ghibli film or something it's just not something I will physically and actually do I mean I might go as far as like just watering the cat grass but that's about as much gardening that I as, as I would have patience for because it, it really isn't my forte it's really not my cup of tea and I just can't <laughs> Sun card. Terrarium. Oh my god, I just love terrariums. I would never make one because, again, I don't have the patience. <laughs> it's not something I would do, but I just love looking at them. I think they're really interesting. Ooh, I love this thong. They kind of look like marshmallows. Marshmallow ice cream. Oh my god. C severe craving of ice creams lately. Thorns. The Union. So that was the sticker, I believe. Watershed. Weather. Got a wild color. Winter. So we have the four seasons in there. Wood. I do. I, I was expecting like maybe more cards referencing the astrological sign because the ram card was in there and that was very obviously Aries. But but either way, since I'm Aries and I identify as a ram from time to time and I am a ram astrologically speaking, I'm really glad that card is in there. Wreath. But like other than astrological associations, I do believe that, you know, it's also a very sort of, I, I, I guess I have to look into that. It's, it's, it's like a very earthy animal. I mean, all animals belong to earth and are earthlings, but something about the ram, I guess. But I guess there's also lots of other animals that are really connected to earth. So I wonder why that particular animal is, is sort of gets, gets its own card, you know what I mean? Well, let's take a look at ram, since I'm super curious. Ram, that I don't know what that is. Where is it? L M M O P Q R. Wait, oh, I missed it. Okay, right here. Strength, leadership, ambition, the fiery nature, and strong will can also be a symbol of sacrifice and martyrdom. I believe that's like the only sort of single animal card. The rest are sort of just like images or landscapes of the earth. There's gemstones and lotus. There's like a single flower in there. And there's cactus. So I wonder why the ram card is in there. That's very interesting because I don't know how that fits into the faceted garden oracle. Like I don't know why the ram belongs in the faceted garden. Like I would be really interesting, interested to know why that is. All right, so how are we doing on time? 14 minutes. I guess we could just do a reading. All right, let's test this out. Shuffle's great. Very smooth, as you can see. The size is just perfect. And obviously this thickness is also quite perfect. All right, so what is something that the universe wants us to know? Uh, for those of you who are watching, um, how can we tap into the wisdom of the faster garden? Um, Oh, I think there was this one card I wanted to come up, but I skipped it, but that's okay. I'm sure the right card will come to us. Will make its way to us. What is something the universe wants us to know? Um, okay, that's it. 
pillar. All right, so we got pillar. So I'm gonna intu um, interpret intuitively first. So, um, okay, so the first thing I think of when I look at the pillar is that this is almost like, okay, the first thing actually before that first thing I thought of, like <laughs> the zero thing <laughs> that I thought of uh, was, was the tower card, but but then I start to look at it, it really looks like the pillar of a tree. And the pillar, this really looks like a structure that's kind of towering over the landscapes. And at the pinnacle, or at the top of it, there's this wheel or, you know, there's this sort of like this explosion of wisdom or this sort of, um, the point where it sort of connects with the heavens or connects with the universe, right? So I think that this card is telling us that pillar is, is a structure, like a stabilizing structure, right? So something that stabilizes us something like you know um you know that stabilizes our mental structure emotional structure the foundation of our being those are everything that we have gone through everything that we went through everything that we have fought through arisen through forgiven through everything that we have ever done has led us to this point of connecting with a universe and this sort of specific this point of beingness this point of our existence everything that we have ever done counts everything every thought that we have counts every feeling that we have right whether they are resolved unresolved work through evolved whatever everything about us we are the collection of these these energies and and, and feelings and thoughts like we are the sum of our parts we are everything that we are because because of all of those things and all of those things make up the pillar of our existence. So I think this card is showing up and I do believe we have multiple pillars of existence. Like there's different core messages that we embody. There's different parts of our parts of ourselves that are really prominent, um, you know, when it comes to making decisions in everyday life, feeling empowered, etc. So I think this is, this card shows up to tell us to look at the pillars of our existence. Like what is within our foundation that is supporting us, that is sort of driving our decisions and our actions. What is, do we have a strong enough foundation for us to sort of come together in this, you know, to, it, 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 so that it could solidify in a very powerful way to facilitate our connection with the universe, to facilitate our connection with our higher selves. So what is, what is in our foundation? What's, what's our pillar? You know, what are our core values? What are our core belief systems? I think we need to call that we need to question them and examine them so that we could really harness our power, we could really tap into our free will, and then we could really, you know, reach for that higher connection, that higher self, and really allow that um, higher wisdom to come through. And pillar is perspective and relatively the the relativity, the ability to see the bigger picture and maintain a holistic view of heightened perception of reality so that's a little different than what I interpreted but it is an intuitive deck so so yeah I guess a different kind of perspective that's very interesting mm. I, I guess for this one you have to pull back to really see what it is to see that it is a pillar that's helping us to reach the heavens and I remember talking about this card for like a little while when I was like just browsing through the cards I, it, ran, it reminded me of that creationist myth Right? So what is the pillar that is sort of announcing our existence, I guess? What's, what defines us? You know, what defines, what makes up our foundation? What really is the sum of our parts? What are the parts that make up the whole of us, right? So I think that's really what this card is making me think of. I love how powerful this image is. And also just love how intuitive this deck is. You can really interpret it based on the keywords or key phrases provided in this in this pamphlet or a little guidebook booklet. Or you can just kind of go with the flow and see what is calling out to you. This does remind me of the tower card though, just because you know it is a structure towering over the the landscapes. But I guess this is sort of like a you know, look at the tower for what it is, because usually tower card is about destruction, but this pillar card is like, I just get this feeling like you really need to look at your foundations, you really almost like do a recalibration, really reconsider your life, just be like, okay, what are the parts that are working, what are the parts that are not, and then who, who are you, like what's your legacy, like how, how do you want to exist and carry yourself forward in the world, right? So I think that is really telling us to question that and to reinvent ourselves if we, if we need to. 
All right, so that has been the Fasted Garden Oracle, and I'm super into it. I love the textures, and I just love... I can't say enough about the texture. It's just like, a, a, you know, like really great vibes. It's sort of like this cosmic garden, faceted garden kind of, um, kind of fe uh, feel. And I do hope, like, I think I'm gonna go visit her website to see if she's written anything else about the faceted garden because I would be so interested in finding out more about the philosophy of the deck, the concepts of this deck, what is the world of this deck, what are some things that the creator could tell us about her process. When, when it comes to creating this deck, like what's her, what, what is she thinking, you know, like what what's what, what are some of the thoughts behind the images and stuff and and the lores of this deck, are there any, like, I will be super interested in reading about that. Um, and also why she chose to put a lotus in, a ram, like that single animal, like I'm very, very curious about that. But I definitely recommend this oracle, I can't wait to do readings with it. I think I don't have a lot of earth tone decks just because like they're usually very brown <laughs> but this deck has a lot of green a lot of different colors but still manages to anchor itself in the metaphors of earth and the metaphors of the garden so super super duper awesome and she does have like another deck so go check it out from on her website and yeah thank you so much for watching and thank you to uh, Claire Claire Mac for creating something so beautiful and so gorgeous and so grounding and centering. I think I will actually use this deck to ground my meditations and stuff and I'm really excited about that. So yeah, thank you again for watching. Stay cute and stay fierce. See you guys next time. Blah, 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 blah.